Hello, I'm Josh Stanish, and I'm going to be tying a beadhead prince nymph, uh, but it's in kind of a non-traditional size. Uh, I tie this fly in a size 2, size 4, and size 6, um, primarily for fishing some really off-color water or when the water's real high. It's also a very good fly when the salmon flies are just getting ready to happen and the, fish, the nymphs are migrating to the bank. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first off, basically using a 3x long shanked hook. Um, this happens to be Dairiki. Um, this is a number four. Uh, and then I'm using just a copper bead. You can use whatever color bead you want. These happen to be quarter inch bright beads uh, in the copper color. Um, and this is going to add weight and also some people think it adds a little bit of flash, but I think it's the weight that's more important than anything. Um, so we'll go ahead and put the bead on. Get the hook in the vise. Now these beads have a pretty big countersunk hole on them, so if you just were to tie it like this, it would probably end up falling down and being a little cockeyed on the hook for you. So what I do is pack a little lead wire in behind it here. So this is just some size 030 lead wire. And we're going to go ahead and just wrap a few wraps of the wire on, of the lead on here. And you can go ahead and do the whole shank if you want, but I like it primarily just to fill in this gap be, so the bead stays on the hook nicely. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm tying with, uh, this is pretty heavy thread since it's a big fly. This is flat wax nylon um, by Danville. It's a great little thread for tying woolly buggers and streamers and big nymphs. Um, so we'll go ahead and attach this right behind the lead. Get it built up so that the lead won't slide and the bead won't slide. Now we'll go ahead and wrap right to the back of the hook. And now we're going to attach some goose biots. And these happen to be dark brown. Um, you can use black or Prince Nymph Brown, there's a lot of colors of goose biots, but this standard pattern kind of calls for a brownish color. So I'll take these and they come stripped off of the quill and then you just have this biots here and then you just pull these biots right off the hook. And they like to stick together. Now some people will actually match the biots up and tie them on two at a time. I like to tie them individually so that I can get them right on the hook shank. And you don't want this to be quite as long as the length of the shank of the hook. So I'm going to lay it on the side here. So we get this bite attached on the one side, and you can adjust it a little bit by pulling on it. And I like to have a nice splay out on it so that you're going to have a forked tail here. And I just take the other bite. I'm going to measure it up to length so that they're the same length together and attach it on the side closest to me and this will give us our forked tail. Go ahead and just wrap down these ends here. Now the traditional Prince Nymph uses peacock curl and I'm going to substitute this because if you were to use peacock curl on this big of a hook you'd have to use a whole lot of it. Um, so I'm going to use in replace of it ice dub chenille that Hairline makes. Uh, and it's, this is a color black, and it's got some sparkle, and it looks a lot like peacock curl when it gets wet. So, um, plus it will cover up a large shank easier and quicker than peacock curl. So I'm going to just strip off a little bit of the end so I have a nice core to tie on. Get this core tied in. And bring my thread up to the front by the bead. Now I just simply bring this chenille up the hook. And I'll come up and then I'll probably come back just to give it a little bit of a cigar taper to the body. And I'm only going to come back probably about two thirds of the way and then back up forward again. And this will give us a nice cigar taper. And we'll tie off the chenille. All right, so there's your main body. Um, 
And again, you can see where it's kind of looking like a big stone fly nymph right here. Um, there's a lot of debate why a prince nymph works so well, but it's one of those flies that just keeps catching fish year in and year out. So now we're going to take a uh, saddle hackle here by whiting. Eh, kind of hard to see it on there, but get a nice hackle. And I like to measure it up to see how long these integral fibers are going to be, and that's pretty short, so we need something a little longer. That one should do well. Now, this has a nice fluffy end on it. I like to just go ahead and strip all that fluff off to expose just the bare stem. And leave yourself a nice little tie point. And I like to tie this right directly on top of the hook. Make sure you get that tied in nice and tight. Now we're just going to wrap this hackle right around the front for a collar. And after each time, I like to kind of preen that feather back, and just get it facing backwards. Make a fairly heavy collar on this because it's for dirty water. And tie that off, give it a little trim. Now I like to take all these individual fibers, stroke them backwards, and I'm going to make a couple wraps on it, which will help to make all those kind of splay backwards. And that's going to give you your nice collar. Now the last step on the Prince Nymph is adding some, goose, some white goose biots. Um, and you can do this several different ways. Um, first you want to go ahead and strip off your biots you're going to use. The traditional method of tying these in is to tie them directly kind of on the top and over the back. I like, since it's for be invisible, I like to tie them with the splay of that feather facing outwards. And I'm going to tie them right on the sides instead of so directly on top. Now when you tie in goose biots, leave yourself a little tag end on the front here. You want to tie over that biot. And biots are very slick and they will get, they'll pull out really easy. So the reason I leave this little tag end is then I'm going to fold that tag back over on itself and wrap on it. And that's going to kind of lock that buy it right in place there and that's that will really help to make sure that these bites don't come pulling out on you when you're out fishing so we'll go ahead and do the same on the back side get your length the same on them leave that little tag end fold it back over itself and lock that by it in place if you want you can come in and trim those little tag ends out just to make the fly a little prettier. And then we'll go ahead and whip finish it, add some head cement, and you've got a completed Prince Nymph. And there you have a completed Prince Nymph. And that's the size four big guy for fishing in dirty water.